Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles and um, I've got another fun video for us today. I was working on just some fall crafts and these are more like fall leaves, I guess. Um, not everybody's into pumpkins. So this one has a little bird, an owl, and um, I love the texture on these. I'm gonna show you how I did this. It's a simple um, using a napkin technique to collage. We're going to use a napkin, some book page, um, some of that packing paper just because I have so much of it. And then we're going to also make some fun flowers. So um, anyway, I hope you'll stick around. Uh, I like doing some just as little collages that can then go on journal pages or in pockets. And I use some different quotes. This one's from the Velveteen Rabbit. It says, everything that is real was imagined first. I love that. And then this one, stay kind, it makes you beautiful, of course. And then these, of course, they kind of are in the shape or the size of a traditional bookmark, which I love because I, I use bookmarks. But it can also be like a tall tag or journaling card because you can certainly write on the back if you wanted to. Um, and I liked those. These I mounted on a card stock that coordinated with that yellow leaf, so... Anyway, fun, fun. That's what we're going to do. Um, so if you've never collaged with napkins, it's super simple. I'm going to show you how to do that. These are some that I picked up just this week at um, Hobby Lobby. And their fall stuff is 40% off. So good deal. Yay. Um, if you have a Hobby Lobby in your area. And then you're going to need a glue stick. I may need to find another one. That one feels a little, a little light. Um, and some book page to start with and then some things to decorate, okay? So I am going to pull out, this is kind of my gross piece of paper um, that I've been using my glue stick on so I don't get it as much on my mat. So anyway, most of the napkins that you get at the store have layers, you know, and Oh, well, that one just came right off. Look at that. So that's the first layer. This is a three-ply, and sometimes they're a little more. And you can save those pieces of tissue for other things. Um, I don't even know what it said. Where did I say the package? What did it say here? Um, yeah, it, sa it says it's three-ply. So sometimes you think, well, gosh, that's it, you know. But keep playing with it because... That first layer just kind of fell off, and I promise I did not prep that napkin. So if you were using it as a napkin, that wouldn't be great. <laughs> um, but if you fiddle with a corner, and if one corner isn't working, go to another one. I can, I can see this one. Um, but eventually, you're going to be able to pull this apart. Ha! Just like that. And you want to be careful because obviously now you're dealing with a very thin piece of napkin or tissue. Now, um, I just love those fall leaves. I think they're so pretty. So what I want to do is I want to collage this onto some book page because I like that look. Um, you could certainly collage it onto other things, but we are going to collage onto some of this geometry paper that I have. Um, and I'm just using my glue stick and I'm gonna put a nice coat, <laughs> a nice coat, um, get the edges really good. Um, and sometimes these will curl up a little bit, you know, and if you want to, again, while they're drying, put them under maybe in some parchment or wax paper and um, put them under some heavy books. Oops, I got a little off, but that's okay. Um, backing them on to other papers also helps too. And I actually did this a little differently when I wasn't on camera, but you do want to be gentle with it, especially while that glue is still wet. You can rub this side you know, pretty vigorously, but you might rub the napkin up if you're not careful. There's a little bit better way to do this. If you lay your napkin this way, we add glue over here. So again, I'm going over and I'm making sure again, I get those corners good because I'm gonna cut this into different sizes. Um, it's better, it's easier if you do it like this. 
and then lay this layer, lay it on that way. A little bit easier. I don't know why I was sticking the napkin on a sticky piece of paper. Ah, okay. And then let's do another piece right here. And I think we'll be able to get another section there too. So um, if you don't have any book page, you know, I have collaged onto magazine pages. Um, that's kind of fun. My glue stick's running out. Um, I buy these glue sticks in a little, it's not a huge bulk package. I think it's like 12 of them on Amazon. And I have found that to be um, the best price that, that I've been able to find them at. Um, if you are interested in any of my supplies, you can pop over to my um, the link to my Amazon shop and it is an affiliate link. Oh gosh, I'm trying to reach for a new glue stick. And, ta-da, um, this one is done. I do earn a few pennies if you end up making a purchase. It's no cost to you though. It's a program Amazon has for, for, for creators or whoever to earn a little bit um, of extra money, but it also hopefully helps you guys see the supplies that I use. And I'm pretty sure if you go to adhesives on my page, you will find the Yoohoo glue sticks. Now there's other ones I may have linked to because I do like like the Scotch craft one. Um, and depending on what you're doing, like I even use the ones that are kind of, um, they're not kind of, that are repositional are removable it kind of turns your paper into like what's on a sticky note and I use that for things too so there's some different ones but this is the one that I like to use especially for um, this type of collaging and my masterboard collages those kinds of things I'm gonna go ahead and tear this piece approximately to the size that is going to fit oops <laughs> And the piece of, um, we'll do it that way, into the piece of napkin that I have left. All right. And again, I tend to go ahead and do one, one whole layer of napkin and then um, cut it apart. And if I'm going to lay it under books, like I said, this side can be a little sticky so you might want to put it under a piece of parchment paper or something we're going to go on and use mine wet because i didn't make any extra to work with for this video but it's going to be fine now i'm going to switch for when i start layering these and just use my um pva line co brand glue okay so i think they're so pretty all right so now that the book page is on here, you know, it's still, you know, it, see how floppy it is? You know, it's not like it's super sturdy or anything, but it is easy to just cut these pages apart. And we could even put a strip of book page right there on that, that part if we want to. We can always just wrap it around or cut it off. I um, love, if you guys know this about me, I love making um, different types of just ephemera to have to stuff in my journals. Um, and sometimes like when I'm quote working in one of my journals, this, this is what I do, is I make pieces specifically for a page that I'm working on. But I also like to make groups of coordinating pieces. Hmm to think about what to do with that strip. That might be one that I cut some of the petals out of so that um, the petals of the leaves maybe have napkin on both sides. We'll see. I think those are so cute, aren't they? And I even uh, made some of the leaves out of that packing paper too. So it's sort of um, all the same color palette, but I think you can see it and I think it looks cute. All right. So, I am filming this on a Friday in September and um, starting to think about all the fun fall things. There's a big fall festival in a town nearby where we live 
like in two weekends, I think, and we're pretty excited. I don't have a booth or anything, so I'm going to be able to just go and enjoy. So that's exciting. I love all things fall, if you guys haven't figured that out. <laughs> all right, I'm going to trim off the excess. Um, you can tear it, um, like with your ruler, but when this is wet, I tend to have issues, so I'm not going to try to tear it right now. Now, to make the square ones, this one is almost the right size, um, but I may cut flowers out of that, I haven't decided. So to make the square one, normally, if this was dry, drier, I would just use my ruler and tear it. But I'm gonna make this one, I'm cutting it at four inches, it's like a four by four square. And again, I left it kind of with rough edges because I don't want it to be perfect. I'll be able to cut, definitely cut some leaves out of that. And then let's do one together that's the two and a half inch width. I'm gonna turn it this way. Um, kind of for like a, a journaling card, a tall card. All right, and my book page is dictating the height of this one and it's almost six inches just to give you a reference point so we'll make one of each style um, and then see where we're at now um, let's let those dry a minute and talk about the flowers so I'm using my trusty old Stampin Up flower punch and I know there's lots of different shapes of flower punches out there so I'm using this and it makes this flower super easy that's an easy way to go if you don't have a flower punch I think I've shown you guys how I've pieced flowers together using heart shapes so heart shapes are another way to go um, depending on you know which one you choose you'll have different shaped flower or a different size flower so that's a good way to go but if you don't have any punches and you want to do this or make a flower you can free form cut petals and that's what I did on this one now I ended up making it much larger than the ones on my prototype um, and I have a video I'll try to link it for you guys where we did a big kind of applique flower same concept it's the same concept um, where you just individually cut the petals out into what appears to be a petal shape <laughs> kind of an oval with a point and then I used a circle punch as my base or a circle that has been punched out as my base and I layered some of the packing paper in there so if you don't have a punch, don't let that stop you. You can do that. And like I said, I'll link that video in the description um, if you want to learn how to uh, get, get a little bit more instruction on making flowers. Um, and then I just sewed a button on there. So I'm going to make one together in case you're new to that or you want to see how I did it. So I definitely think this piece will be a good piece to punch a flower out of and hopefully this is dry enough this punch for whatever reason is nice and sharp and I've used it quite a bit through the years but I just really like using it because look at that how easy um, was that this paper is just so thin and soft so each of these flowers that I made I did two that have been collaged with the napkin. And again, I can't begin to tell you the texture, how lovely this is. And then we're gonna do two out of this brown paper. I'm actually gonna fold it over to make it easier because this paper is super thin. All right. It just likes to get hung up in there, but you can pull it out. All's good. Um. All right, so to make the flower, if you want to, you can ink it a little bit, um, and you can ink before you assemble it. You can also add more ink after you assemble it. It's just up to you, um, and it's not necessary, um, but I'm gonna do it. And if you don't have these napkins, by the way, you use whatever napkins you have. If you like this, this idea, I've done napkin collaging with some beautiful napkins. Um, and for all different seasons and colors. Look at that. Okay, let's find a button. I've been using these wood buttons because I kind of liked, like on this side it looks like this, and on this side it kind of has a, 
kind of a marbled effect there. I like that one. That's kind of like the ones I used there. Um, look at these giant ones. I need to find something to do with this. This would be a good, like, large, like, journal cover kind of button. Um, and these are off of a, th these aren't vintage. They're, um, again, some that I just found on Amazon really inexpensively, and you get a big bag. So they've been working for me just to have something new to play with or different to play with. Whoa. All right, I've already threaded my needle. And this thread is interesting. It does not act like normal thread. And it doesn't really feel like normal thread. What is, it's a quilting thread, but it almost doesn't feel like normal quilting thread. It almost feels like, um, I don't know what the right word is. Let me give that some thought. I'm trying to think of the word of what this feels like. All right, you can glue these together if you're worried about being able to hold them. I'm just going to hold it together and try not to poke myself. I guess I would say it almost feels like super, super, super thin twine. All right, I just poked through on this side just to, I would know, so I would know where on the back where the hole was. All right. And it's just like sewing a button onto fabric. My watch wants me to stand up. It's so weird because right before I sat down to do this video, I promise you guys, I went up and down the stairs a couple of times because I was checking on my dogs. And then I, excuse me, <laughs> I'm sneezing now. Goodness. Um, anyway, I went up and down the stairs a few times. I went to the bathroom. I checked on my dogs. I got myself some water. I know I moved at least enough to get my walk goal for this hour. And now it's telling me I need to get up in the last 10 minutes of the hour. I do not understand. And then there are sometimes I feel like I haven't hardly moved. And it says I met my walk goal. So I don't know. Maybe it's me shaking my hands. We shall see. Okay, so there's a the flower. Yay. So sometimes I will get, I don't know why I'm trying to tie a knot on that. I don't need it. Um, obsessed and make a whole pile of these. I love them. I think um, there's just so, so many things we could do with those. So I may make a big pile of them after I'm done with this video. All right. So I made that one. And then I'm going to use this one that I made off camera um, on one of the ones we're going to make together. All right, so let's do the bookmark one and I'll use this one, the smaller one for it. And this is the piece of cardstock I have. And you talk about ancient, goodness. It's almost a brand new pack. This bright goldy yellowy color of cardstock. This again was back in my, um, when I was big into card making and rubber stamping and scrapbooking. Um, I, I still and I still have quite a bit. I'm glad I didn't get rid of everything. Um, I got rid of sadly a lot the last time I moved, just trying to downsize, and I hadn't been crafting as much in in those years, and thought, oh, I'm not going to need this, and now I'm crafting more than I ever have in my life, and um, I'm glad that I have a lot of these old supplies. All right, and I'm just cutting this out with my scissors and leaving a little bit of a, a little bit of that yellow. I got a little close there, but I think that napkin's gonna roll up if I, I kind of encourage it to. I think it looks okay. All right, I meant to leave a little bit more of a border all the way around of the yellow. I think it's fun for that color. Now, on the bookmarks, we can decorate these any way we want. Um, on the ones that I did ahead of time, I just put a little label and a flower. I But I pulled out my fall ribbons, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe a piece of ribbon would look cute on here. I don't know. Let's play with it. I um, made these fun fall Whew, that's a little bit not the right color. Um, I made these fun like fall gifts for my um, shop, my silver sparkle shop at the church painted tree. And um, ooh, that orange looks good. Got a little bit of the green. And these are the ribbons that I used to tie ribbons on the baskets. Um, well, they weren't really baskets, but anyway. And 
Ooh, does some red look good? Red's a little bright. Oh, wow, look. <laughs> look at me, I'm just excited to explore my ribbons again. I didn't realize I even had those more neutral ones. I tended on those, I used the plaids, and I used this green a lot, obviously. But I think, I'm not gonna use that. I think I am done making those. We'll see how they sell. I've got um, just two more weekends in September and then hopefully they'll sell also in October. They're kind of fall-y, um, pumpkin, harvesty, Thanksgiving-y themed. So we'll see. All right, I don't know what I'm thinking about doing here. Now these are not like super soft. These are ribbon, um, I don't know, that's like a lightweight burlap or that kind of material. Um, thinking it might be pretty with the flower. Cute. Hmm. But maybe a pop of color. I always tend to shy away from some of the color when I'm doing this type of crafting. And I'm thinking it might be pretty. And this if these get away from you, let me just tell you, they just unravel so quickly, it's not even funny. Ooh, I do think I like the yellow. Got several yellows going on. All right. Um, do we want to label too, or do we want to just do, maybe we'll do something crazy like this. This one I'm definitely going to, I think, consider a journaling card. I'm not going to make it as a topper. I'm going to put it off to the side. And that also kind of covers up the fact that I did not um, do the best at cut, trimming that out. Okay, I'm going to use my trusty glue dots. I love these things. They are super sticky. A little hard to get off of the dispenser sometimes, but worth it. And um, I think my fabric fix glue would be a good choice. Um, or these types of glue dots, or even my just my, my two-sided tape, I think would be a good choice um, to hold all of this together. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit just of white glue too. All right, oh, so cute. I think this would also be like, if you were going to give somebody a gift, you know, you could just poke a hole or tie it on with a piece of twine um, and, you know, put, you know, to, to Jennifer, love Pam or something like that on there. Um, there we go. All right, I'm happy with that one. I'm not gonna put a label on it because you decided to use some of this ribbony stuff. Whoa, they're flying everywhere. Okay. And then what else are we going to do? Oh, we're going to make this one. So what I did with this, these, this kind, I was just considering this more of just like a little collage that I might end up um, literally just gluing to a page or tucking inside a pocket. Um, sometimes I like to have things that are super thin that don't add as much bulk. And that's kind of where I was going with this. So I'm just going to glue the book page to the packing paper and you don't I mean you can just leave it with book page or you could do a couple of layers of book page you don't have book page like I said magazines you could collage it on top of a pattern scrapbook paper that would be cute or a digital um lots of options all right I am going to tear this with the ruler all right so fun and easy. Okay, and I could ink some too. Now this one has a, a flower that's a bit bigger. That one petal looks very weird to me. I'm wondering, I've got two petals left that I've already made. I could cut a few more out. I'm wondering if I tuck something under here. Would I like it better? I don't know. I'm just, no, it just looks weird. I think I just wasn't um, very focused when I was gluing it together, but we're not gonna worry about it. We're gonna use it because all flowers 
are unique and beautiful. Now, I do have a couple of little things that I had prepped. Let's see. I've got some quotes I want to use. I've got worrying is like paying a debt you don't a debt you don't owe, Mark Twain. And I love C.S. Lewis. You are never too old to set another goal or to dream another dream. You know, that is a really good motto for me this year because I have definitely gone a little crazy with my life doing things a little different. How about that? Do we want to use this cute lady? This little lady? I think I, think I want to cut her down and use her. Maybe we'll do that. Looks like she's walking around in a kind of dress I've never worn in my life from a bygone era. They definitely had clothes back then. I even look back on the pictures. I'm sharing my age, but I went to high school and graduated in the 80s. <laughs> and um, our prom dresses were these huge monstrosities. <clears throat> Fun times, very different, but um, not quite like this, but a little bit different of a monstrosity. All right, we're just going to... I don't know if I'm going to use this piece of burlap ribbon or not, but I'm I'm playing with it. Okay, sometimes you just got to start gluing things down and not overthink it. I don't want to cover up the pine cone. I like the pine cone. I want to be able to read my quote. So that was a bit of what the struggle was here. Because I don't want the petals to cover it up. I think if I turn it just like that, it'll be okay. All right, I'm just gonna glue this down. There we go. And I was able to just kind of glue on that last, that circle there, so I knew where to put my circle. Oh yeah, I like it. Do I want a piece of this on here? I don't think so. I think I am happy, and I'll save that for another project with how that looks. Okay, so again, super simple ideas. You can make these, of course, in any shape you want to. Um, and it's an easy mask make. And I know I've had a few people comment recently, because I do tend to use a lot of digitals um, in my crafting, because... I love that, um, but if you don't have a printer, it could feel kind of frustrating. And of course, there's beautiful scrapbook papers and ephemera books you can cut out and things like that. But um, this is a fun way using a, a supply most of us can get our hands on, which are napkins in some for fashion, um, and just make something really gorgeous. So I love that pattern. I love the texture it adds to the paper. And um, I know I'm going to be making some more of these. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I appreciate all your comments and your support. Um, leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe um, to my channel. I appreciate everybody. Have a great day.